All right, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another evening, another Project Healing Water special here live on YouTube. We are doing this every week. Uh, I believe this is week 26, if I am correct in my calculations. Um, and that's carry the seven divided by two, figure in the factor of four. Um, yeah, that's that's almost a uh, six months worth. Hmm. But come rain, come shine. Uh, here we are. Hey. So tonight I decided we're gonna be tying up some beadhead prince nymphs. True fact. Uh, way while back, I actually uh, tied these up and submitted them. Um, for the fly tying contest many moons ago. Um, I love a Prince Nympha. In fact, I tied one up earlier today and then I went out to uh, the practice pond, uh, the secret lake, downtown, and uh, caught two little sunnies on them. And they were no bigger than uh, a deck of cards, probably combined. They weren't big at all. Anyways, the Prince Nymph, how we doing? Uh, we're gonna let it roll on in, give it a few minutes, let everybody tune in, tune on before you tune out. Uh, hit that thumbs up button, let me know you guys are uh, tracking along. How's everybody doing? Uh, what a weird week weather-wise uh, we've had here in Minnesota. Um, one thing I will say... Uh, this morning when I got up and got out, it literally smelled like I woke up at a campground, and <clears throat> and that's here. Um, we are, I don't even know how many hundreds of miles we are from the west coast here in Minnesota, but uh, to be able to wake up, step outside, and it smells like a campfire, it's, you can just smell the wood burning, um, the devastation, um, so... Lots of love to our uh, West Coast friends. Um, I'm sure there's all sorts of uh, programs, fly or Project Healing Waters uh, fly fishing programs that are we're already disrupted based off of coronavirus, and now um, I'm sure there's just absolute devastation along some pretty pristine, pretty epic uh, fish fishing waters. So I don't know. Let's. Go ahead and just jump right into it. We're going to be tying the Prince Nymph, not to be uh, confused with the uh, the artist formerly known as Prince. Um, yeah. Why, why, why delay? Let's go ahead and just jump on in. Um, hopefully, we'll be able to get all the way through uh, tonight without any major technical difficulties but if anything does pop up uh, we'll be sure to uh, address that situation I have kind of worked my way through a couple live stream epic failures as far as cameras going out and such um, but I don't know that's neither here nor there alright so let's do it let's do it so I am going to be rocking these size 12s. I like tying on size 12s. They're big enough to see, small enough to fish. Uh, they keep the smallest of smallest fish off, um, but you can really catch some pretty pretty epic fish. And I believe it was a year or two ago, I actually I was out and I caught a largemouth, a decent sized largemouth bass, um, lake fishing on a uh, Prince Nymph. I mean, what, what do you expect? What do you know? What do you do? All right. So this is my uh, little this is my little trick. I'll take my size 12 hook and I'm going to put it in my vise just like so, oh so carefully. Bead, bead head, roly poly bead head. It's a 2.7 millimeter. I kind of have these spec'd out as uh, size 12 to 14s ish. And, you know, there's Really, there's suggestions, there's you know guidance, there's charts and stuff for beads and hooks, um, but it really it comes down to the bead and it comes down to the hook. Uh, no two hooks and beads and sizes and everything. But what we want to make sure is we put the 
big side, the larger opening of the uh, of the bead towards the back. Okay, um, if we have it towards the front, what happens is that covers uh, the eye of the hook, and that's going to be uh, no good for nobody. So let's go ahead and just get that resituated into a standard fly tying configuration. I'm going to push that back just a little bit. Tip it just forward right there. All right, let's go ahead and add some weight. Um, these are typically tied with a little bit of weight. And to keep it clean, we're going to use some lead-free wire. That's two hundredths, two hundredths lead-free wire. Not really an O to O. I like to go as counter apps. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm gonna pause there, and I can use I can use the wire kind of as a ratchet for itself, right? And I can use that to my advantage to kind of help push that back end down. All right, so we're at like seven wraps or so. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Lucky thirteen. Lead wire is easy enough to just helicopter off. I know I get on, I, I get on my high horse um, when I talk about snipping wire, um, and that's for the final wire and stuff. Lead wire, mash it, smash it, stick it in the stew. It's all good. All right, we got our uh, wire on, and now we can finally get get to it with our thread. And I am going to be using da 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 red a dot uni thread. So I'm going to start right behind that wire, wrap back just a tad, and then we'll just go ahead and snip off our tag end. I like using red thread on my print snips because I like the nice red hot collar that appears at the very very end. I like the red collars. And I actually exaggerated just a little bit, a little slightly oversized collar. We're going to wrap that wire in back and forth and that protects that uh, bead head from sliding back. Alright, advance our thread to the rear just before we get to the bend. Just like that. I like it. All right. For the tail. Da, 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 da. We haven't tied with this yet um, in any of the Project Healing Waters uh, video series. And we're going to introduce it today. It's called Goose Biot. Right? This is the side part of a feather, right? We got these little biots. Almost like I don't know, they kind of remind me of a, uh, maybe a porcupine quill or something. But they're just the side side part of a, a main feather. And we're going to take two of those. Not one, but two of those. Alright. I like to just trim them right off. Just like that. And we got two. And what we want to do when we tie these in is we want them to go opposites. They're each each one has its own slight curve, and I'm going to see if we can't get on that a little bit. See how that... So what would be the bottom side is out. Bottom side is out. Okay, if we tie it like this, and we tie it too far down into the bend, you're going to end up with your tail kind of looking kind of sad, pointed down, which may or may not be a, a bad thing. Um, and depending on who you talk to, some uh, people tie them both in at the same time. Um, what I'm going to do is tie them in one at a time. Nice pinch on that. This is going to be on the near side of the hook, and I'm going to keep it on this the side of the hook. I'm going to get one, two wraps. 
I'm going to advance my thread forward. I'm going to pinch that back down. I'm going to keep that on the side still. I'm going to work my thread back. Yeah, I'm introducing some extra thread wraps, but if we're cool, calm, and calculated about it, it all works out. All right, we're going to repeat the far side. Go ahead and line up the tips. Pinch down on it. We'll make sure that locks in on the far side. I'm going to fold the tag end back, wrap underneath. And I'm just going to set that tag end. Because what I've experienced in the past, and I can work my thread back, and final, final wraps. Okay, so now I got these two little niblets kind of flipping, flipping out on the side. Go ahead and trim those off. All right. I like that. Let's go ahead and find some... Um, I go back and forth sometimes. Sometimes I use a gold wire... This time I'm going to use some uh, French French tinsel. It's a gold oval tinsel. Pretty stuff. As you can see, I'm kind of worked my way down. I've had this little batch for quite some time. We're going to tie this in. Right behind the, uh, the weighted wire, that lead-free wire. And everything's kind of hanging out back here right now on the rear portion of this. Get a little bit of that so we can set that off to the side. All right. Up next, let's grab some peacock hurl. And I'm gonna go one, two, three, four, five, just because. Nice, five, decent quality peacock curls. One, two, three. Make sure I can count right. There we go. One, two, three, four, five. This is going to make a nice, nicely sized one. Okay, tie that in, long portion facing towards the rear. And we can just break off the tips as we wrap forward. All right, let's go ahead and wrap our thread forward to about a, about a bead's head, about a, about a bead head's length behind um, the bead. All right. Grab that peacock curl. I'm gonna grab it a grip with my little uh, hook and hackle grabber. Make it easy on myself. I'm gonna give it a slight twist forward. Work my way around that hook. And we'll just take touching wraps. I'm gonna keep twisting as I work my uh, peacock curl forward. Not a lot. That's a balance. And just like that. Pretty smooth, I think. that off. A few wraps behind. And we'll go ahead and just trim off the excess. Now there's something magical about peacock curl. I don't know what it is. Uh, the fish like it. The fish love it. All right. Here we are so far. Now 
we're going to go ahead and advance our ribbing towards the front and that is going to be our small French tinsel in this particular one. We might go to a medium tinsel. It's up to you. Just work our way forward nice and even. And the downside to the French tinsels, it doesn't really slide slide in your fingertips like a wire does. Not without chafing and chafing. Go ahead and give that a few locking ramps. And if you have an older pair of scissors, I recommend trimming tinsel and junk like that with an older pair. Um, if you have a nice pair of scissors, save that for uh, your softer materials, your hairs and your hackles. And speaking of hackles, I'm going to work my thread back a little bit. I need a little bit of room to make a little bit of twist of a little bit of hackle. <clears throat> All right, here is our hackle, and this looks like it was just like a half a cape at some point. And we want something relatively small. We don't want anything too ginormous for our collar. So we're going to go ahead and give that a quick looksy-loo. Just a little bit too long. Let's go... That'll work. Don't need too much. Go ahead and prep our stem. Trim off the fluff. And we'll perform a little high and tight little notch on either side. I'm going to go ahead and just strip off maybe three or four barbs on the on the right side. Tie this in right behind that bead head. Synchronize our watches because it is actually time. It's hackle time. Here we go. Oh, silently swear in my own mind. Once, twice, thrice. Keeping it relatively sparse. We'll lock that down. We're keeping everything to the rear of that bead. All right, let's go ahead and trim off the excess. So the hackle is all the way around 360 degrees around the fly. What we're gonna wanna do is we're gonna wanna pinch down and back. Down and back. And then I'm going to wrap my thread back just the tiniest little bit. Help encourage that. Now I got a couple of those hanging out up on top. I'm not going to lose any sleep because they're gone now. So everything's hanging out kind of off to the sides and down because on the top we're going to add our horns. Ben's in the house. Good evening, Ben. Tardy for the party. That's all good. That's all good. I actually had an English teacher in college. That's where I got the tardy for the party because she would call out the students when they came in late. Oh, look who's tardy for the party. 
go ahead and take two. Not one, but two. Let's clean those off nice and simple. All right, and when you do trim them, you're going to end up with two slightly different lengths. That's the only downside to uh, snipping them off. Uh, some of the hardcore old schoolers will swear by only stripping them off because they leave you a little curly Q tag end off the back end. It's up to you. You'll discover. All right, so these are our little horns. And we are going to put these on, I don't know, maybe like a 15 degree angle, 15, 20 degree angle. And just like I do with the, the back end, I'm just going to do these one at a time. And I'm actually going to take... I like taking them right to that back end. Full length of that fly. Just a couple of wraps to capture it. And then I can take the other side, set it on top, slide it into position. Looks good enough to me. A little bit off. Let's go ahead and rewind. We're just a tick off on this first one. We're a little bit further down than I would like to be. There we go. I think that's better. Could be exactly the same for all I know. Take a wrap or two underneath, real quick, just to keep it from sliding around. And where's my the good scissors? There they are. Turn that off, nice and close. Bada boom, bada bing. Cover that up in front just a little bit, lock that all in. Like I said, I like a nice big bright red collar on mine. That's me, that's mine. Um, different strokes, different folks, you know what I mean? All right, let's whip finish this off. Get a little dab of head cement. We'll get the bench monkey available. Hello, I'm the bench monkey. Oh my goodness, so after this we have a quick introduction. Because we found the bench monkey's friend, the bumblebee. I think I added just a wee little bit too much there, but we'll just work it in. And zap it. So that is kind of a basic bead-headed Prince Nymph. And I can tell you right now, I'm just a little crooked with that. Those top horns. Um, but it'll definitely fish. So what do you think? Prince Nymph. Is it everything you uh, dreamed it would be? I think so.
here we go so now we can see ourselves and we can see the fly let's go ahead and just take a quick minute and uh, check in with everybody how is everybody doing um, it's been a crazy week um, it's it's about all I can say about the week because it's just been absolutely crazy um, one thing after another this that and the other it's how we roll we just keep going forward that's all we can do right anyways but we got a quiet group tonight that's all right small group small group tonight only six of us at the present moment and I know I'm one of them on over there so that means there's only five of us watching tonight oh boy I'm gonna have to start inviting our friends ladies and gentlemen call in some friends let's bring let's bring these numbers up that way we can all talk about how much fun we are having watching me tie flies I don't know it's the best we got right now um, you know it's not ideal but it is what it is I guess some people love that saying some people hate it I don't know I'd go either way with it so yeah here we are once again September 16th can you believe it Let's see, last time we met, it was the 9th. We had Patriots Day. We celebrated September 11th. Um, it was a it was a mentally mental health day. It can be kind of taxing, but we get our way through. So let's continue on and tie more flies. So I don't remember exactly when and where I first tied a uh, Prince Nymph, but a um, I've had good success with it. I've always had great success. Great success. I got some flies I got to put away. Open up room. Make way. I guess a Prince Nymph, I guess you would uh, kind of keep it up there with the uh, with the likes of a uh, just a pheasant tail nymph as far as kind of a basic utility um, utility fly. All right, here we go once more once. I should tie up some of those UFOs. All right, man. Let me write that down. Uh, ben, I want you to I want you to shoot me an email. Email me, or somehow I got to get your information. Uh, come heck, come heck or high water there. Um, I'll tie you up some UFOs. I'll have to double check and. I'll do the best I can. I'll, I'll tell you that. Come heck or high water there. The pink and white woolly bugger did not get out yet. Um, she's still hanging out in the bugger bin. Um, we got our size 12. This is our hook. We're using meow. And... Yeah. I don't know what to say about it. Let's get our bead, gold bead head, 2.7 millimeter. I got these sized out for size 12s to 14s thereabouts-ish. And I guess really what the big determining factor on, uh, you know, beads and hooks is will it slide past the eye? Well, first you got to get it past the bend. And if you're using a barbed hook, you'll want to mash that barb prior to. Um, and I like to just throw my hook in the vise like this, and I roll the bead around in between my finger and my, th my pointer finger and my thumb. 
until I get the hole exposed that I want and it's just as simple as sliding it in. Okay, when we slide our bead up and around and reaffix everything to where it needs to be, the larger opening of that bead is on the back side. I wonder if I could just zoom the crap in on that. Let's see. I bet you I can do something stupid. I've never actually checked to see how far in that goes, so... Wow, my fingers look huge. But hopefully you can see the back side of that bead. You know what? We're going to tie one up just like this. I'm going to leave it zoomed in just like this. Crazy zoomed in. I, it's not quite the max. Let's see how far it does go for the max. 8x. So we'll dial it back just a notch or two. All right. Ba -ba -da -ba 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 wire. Lead free wire. It's round wire. Lead free. Three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to stop there, give it a squish, and then use this to leverage this back end so you can just kind of. Keep mashing that around. So we're at about 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Lucky 13 for the Prince Nymph. Oh, and we lost it. We didn't lose it. I was just pressing down on the vise with my back hand. There we go. We're good. All right, let's find our thread. Start right behind our wire. And give that a trip. I've never actually tied a fly like this live this far zoomed in. I've always had it zoomed out um, a little bit. So hopefully it's not too much and Everybody wants to just get sick. If it's too much, just tell me to zoom zoom out. I have no idea what this looks like on um, larger screens right now because I'm just seeing it um, through my iPod. All right, let's grab our goose biot b i o t and. Usually you can buy them in little packs. They come in like little twin packs or two two packs. Sometimes you can buy them um, in, uh, I'm sorry, a variety pack. But they come in all sorts of different colors. I've got these nice brown. I've got a black, tan, gray, um, dun. Of a Adam's gray, but the nice light tan ones. I actually really like those for golden stone flies. Maybe we'll do that next week. We'll tie a golden stone fly. I haven't tied one of those in years. But anyways, let's go ahead and just take our two goose biots. One, two. And I'm going to take the easy road. I'm going to tie these in one at a time now. Make sure I got this is going to be my near side. So I want to tie the top of it anyways. And then the inside, top side on the inside. So the bottom side becomes the outside. See how much sense that makes? One soft wrap to capture it. I like to advance my thread forward. Then I'll capture it again right behind that wire. Then I'll work my way back.
Not bad. Um, some people, uh, another method, I guess maybe we can do it on the next one, and that would be to lay a thread base and then make a bump, a little thread bump on the back end to help splay uh, these biots out, but I really don't think they need that much assistance on the spread. They're already split by the shank of the hook. So again, like always, and like with all flies that I teach here and tie here, this is a way to tie it. It is never, ever the way to tie it. Just a way. And it happens to be my way. And it's never my way or the highway. Not with fly tying. You dig? I dig. Alright, so on that first one, we just went with a what? A, a small opal tinsel. I think I want to. Maybe. Let's see here. Do I have. I thought I had a larger. Medium. I do have medium. I don't think I have a large. If I do have a large, I don't know where it is. And I'm not going to find it. Not in the next 30 seconds. So we'll step it up just a little bit in size. With our French tinsel, we're going to go with the medium this time. Why not? Size 12 hook. Yeah, I think this will work. We're going to tie that in on this back end. Excellent. All right. Let's find some peacock curl. Tell you what, man, the camera quality on this isn't that bad. Considering uh, we're just running it off of the smartphone. Two, three, four, and. I'm going to go with five strands of peacock curl. We're going to tie it in by the tips, pointing forward. And we'll make sure we get our thread all the way to the rear. We'll wrap forward a little bit. Once we get to that wire, we'll just go ahead and break off the tips. All right, work our way up the lead-free wire. And we're gonna park our thread just a tick behind um, the uh, bead head. Yep, exactly. Instead of the bump, 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 bump. Yeah, and that's and that's one thing I will always encourage is I will always encourage experimentation. Because the reality is is if you tie a fly and you you're not satisfied with it, and if it's your last hook, guess what you can do? You can untie it. And then retie it. But I'd rather just fish it. I was actually trying to think of what to do. Um, I got a big pile of flies that I've tied over the years. And I almost kind of want to grade them like the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, <laughs> actually, there's really no bad fly, uh, just like the good and the ugly. Um, sometimes I'll just get halfway through a, a fly and just, I'm done with you. Set it off to the side and never see it again. It's supposed to be relaxing. The beatings will continue until morale improves, right? Like that behind. 
Just like that. I like it. Alright. Uh oh. I think we might have a system failure. Let's see here, how we doing? Well, it looks like we're still live streaming, at least for now. Okay. I, s I looked, at this, looked at my monitor and I was getting the spinning wheel and nothing was moving, but it looks like we are synced back up. Talk about a buffer, huh? All right. No kidding. There we were. Let's go ahead and work our way uh, with our ribbing. Do one full turn at the rear. And when we wrap this forward, we'll just get it to lay down nice and flat. Mind the tip of the hook. Nothing will smash your material, cut it faster than anything else. Boy, that's a lot of gold bling back there, huh? That's the difference between a small and a uh, medium French tinsel, huh? Va, 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 voom. I like it. All right, let's find our hackle. I think you're going to be it. Fluff. A little notch on either side. And then we'll just strip a couple of those barbs off. Like that. All right. It's tackle time. All right. We're going to give the seal one, two, three. That's a one. That's a two. And that's a three. And each wrap, I move my thread forward, or, or not my thread, but my uh, hackle forward, so I'm not stacking these directly on top of each other. Give that a trim. Just like that. Down first, and then back. Down and back, down and back. Okay, anybody who doesn't want to cooperate, just go ahead and trim them off. There we go. 
Looking buggy. We are looking buggy. Looking kind of nymphy too. All right, here we go. Go ahead and find two of these. White biots. Trim them off. One, two. And again, you know, I don't try to get these both in in one shot. I like to just set them on top, line up where I want them. I got the time. I don't have a. Well, I'm not in a rush. I don't have a quota. About, about like so. I don't know, 15 degrees or so. A couple wraps underneath. Help keep everything from sliding. Nice close trim. We'll finish locking that down and build our collar. I like it. And we'll finish with a whip finish. Bada boom, bada bing. Go eat your dinner. Go eat dinner. All right, let's see here. A little dab of head cement. I'm using some Solarez Bone Dry. Right on that collar. All right, we'll give it a zap, set it, and forget it. There we go. Well, what do we think? How's that picture coming across? Is it uh, quality-wise? We looking good on that? I think it looks pretty. It looks good on the monitor, from what I can tell. Let's see here. Looks nice and green in the background. Yeah. Well, who do we got in the house? We got Ben and we got Josh. Ja or Ben went to go get dinner. I guess it's just Josh and I. Um, I am going to take a quick pause for the cause myself. Um, not for dinner, though. I already had my dinner. I had myself a couple of burritos. Some fancy, uh, fancy burritos. Oh, this headset for the birds not to uh, drink my ginger ale in front of you oh Ken good evening good morning how are you all the way from the other side of the world beautiful thanks for tuning in I really appreciate that um, so let's see here. Let's go ahead and I'm going to take a quick pause for the cause. Um, I need to stretch out my back and I will return and we will tie uh, two, maybe three more. Two, maybe three more. 
crystal clear and it fits the frame. All right, cool. All right, we'll be right back, folks. Please stay tuned. We'll be right back.
All right, ladies and gentlemen, I regret to inform you, but we are back. <laughs> well, let's do a part two, round two, second half of the program. We're going to continue on tying some Prince Nymphs. Uh, we've tied two exactly the same, or at least close to the same to begin. Um, and... I've got some different colored biot we can experiment with, so let's go ahead and uh, let's see. So let's see. I got kind of a, a bluish biot, but I don't think it's a, a color fast. Um, I don't think it was sold as blue. I think it was a decorative off of something, a centerpiece or something. Um, that is, um, well, back in the day, uh, we used to have these things called weddings, right? And other celebrations and lots of people used to get together and we used to just set up table settings and they would set up uh, beautiful table decorations and this and that and if you were uh, in the right set of mind you could uh, find uh, peacock uh, eyes peacock curl eyes or other types of feathers or decorations or this and that uh, the frugal fly tires seldomly bored um, so uh, when we are out and about, we always keep our fly tires eyes open, and we can always usually find some sort of material here or there or somewhere and um, experiment with it. It may or may not, um, the, the quality of it, it may or may not last, um, but if you found it, how much did it cost? Nothing. So... Let's go ahead and dive right back in. Boom. There we go. That's a pretty prince, man. I like that. What do you guys think? Do we like the uh, smaller, the small uh, French tinsel, or do we like the medium French tinsel? I think the medium, it just disappears, or the small, it just disappears. And the medium, it stands out. It's a little more visible. But let's... Get, get, get to it. All right. Where are we at? We are looking for our hooks. Size 12. I have to hold the bag way back there for you to get the whole picture. Oh, I forgot. Got one set off to the side. Alright, here we go. Oh, can't even see that. We're so zoomed in. I'll try it like that. I am using a 7.2 millimeter. Again, I got those kind of specked out. Actually, you know what? We're tying this one just a tick differently. We're changing our MO. So I'm going to switch from... the gold bead. Let's see, do I have any black? Set those off to the side. We're going to switch to a black bead, black tungsten. And this is going to give it a slightly different look just by changing the bead head. Um, I was fishing uh, the prints today out at Lake Jorge and uh, the, I think it just might have been a little too much with the gold bead. Sometimes the gold bead can be too much for the fish. And they just don't, they don't respond well to it. Here we go. I like that. And we were going to go slightly different. Let's find maybe a different thread. I 
think that's all packed up. I was hoping to do... Um, I got this nice blue thread somewhere, and I think... I think it's got to be in the bin, in the box, which is way buried behind and not have to move things to get to it. So we'll get to that later. Uh, let's go ahead and get our weighted wire. Again, we're using a lead-free wire. Zero, two, zero, that's two tenths, that's two hundredths, tenths, hundredths, thousandths, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, pause there, give it a squish, and instead of trimming that tag end off, just mash it around. I see so many videos, people trimming both ends off. Here we go. Mash that right into that bead. That opening, that kind of helps self-align, self-center. Namaste it. Alright, let's go ahead and... Start our thread right behind the wire. A dot thread. And da 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 da. tie in point right at the bend and again if you go too far back you know what I'm gonna do myself I'm gonna we're gonna do a little bump right back here just a little bit of a bump doesn't need to be much So this is that kind of, it's a dyed, it's decorative. I don't know how long that blue will last, but we'll give it a try. One, two is the magic number. And we'll tie these in one at a time, though. These clothes are a lot longer than the other ones. Still want to measure that out proportionate. About a hook's length from the tie-in point. and trim off our excess. See ya. I like it. And we'll get one more on for the far side. Match those up. And we'll lock that in. That'll work. Boom, bada, bing. Let's 
go with that medium tinsel again. I like that medium. Peacock curl. Five has been working pretty good for us. One, two, three. I'm going to stop at four because I am going to add in just a little bit of magic. That's a lot shorter. Hmm. Maybe not. Let's try a white one, maybe. I think that'll work. I have a white emu, or not emu, white ostrich hurl. So we got four, four peacock, and one ostrich. This is going to give us just a slightly different look. What it's going to be exactly, I don't know. We're going to find out though. I'll just break off those tips. And we'll park our thread. Punch those together, and we're going to give that our little twist. I really like taking um, different color ostrich and mixing it in with peacock like this because what the result is, it's just magical, I think. I'm not going to find that in any stores. I'll tell you that for free. I'm going to give it a couple more tighter twists. And like I said, it is a, there is a balance of twisting and over twisting and under twisting. With enough practice and enough trial and error, you too will find that magic line. Go ahead and lock that off there. Blue by it. A little ostrich in the mix. Oh boy, we missed it. Okay. The camera quit. Here I am. See, the thing is, is I have this built in layers. Uh, so let's get this camera reinstituted. We'll go over here. I'm not sure why that does that. Let's try it again. Start server. And... Here we go. We are back in action. Not sure why that does that, but it does. It did. Let's see, we tracking, that's tracking. 
the delays call caught up and we are back on screen <sighs> I'm ready for it I, I almost anticipated it for whatever reason my camera and the phone uh, disconnect or not the camera and the phone but what am I saying I don't know what I'm saying all right anyways so that's where we are I don't know where the camera cut out on us um, but at some point it did hmm all right let's check it out let's work our ribbing forward we'll do one full turn at the rear but don't, don't take it if it's pinching your uh, your biot down and back ease up oh the hat my hat the project healing waters hat on which hat do I have on I don't even know. I have so many hats, it's ridiculous. I've got one of every Project Healing Waters hat that's ever been made since the beginning of time. Almost. Uh, it's ridiculous. I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11 fly fishing-ish, whatever you want to call it. Fly fishing hats. Brands outfits whatever companies and then I got another four or five on the floor and Chicago Cubs hats and military hats and veterans hats I got a hat for every day of the week I don't plan it out like that because who's got time for that not me all right bye let's do where'd that blue go here it is. I'll do these blue ones again. Kind of a blue, kind of a aquamarine, kind of something or another. Not sure what you would call that color. I'm sure there's a color ex color theory expert out there, which is actually something something to consider. Um, you know, when you're tying flies and looking at color patterns and this and that, look into your color theory. Go back into that fun jazz. Um, I don't know. I like to think about color theory when I uh, tie flies sometimes. I don't like to think about it, but I like to keep it into consideration. Um, and I also... I did it for a while, and I went back and I did some tests and I looked at some photos some older not older photos but photos of flies that I tied and I uh, did an overlay of the golden ratio um, over on top of them and you'd be surprised how close a lot of them came out oh we forgot our uh, forgot our hackle this one doesn't get hackle I guess do we want to go back I think all right we're gonna take a pause right there we're gonna decide do we go back and add hackle yes or no and what color what color hackle should we add I'm thinking I'm thinking I could go either way hackle no hackle I think it needs a hackle I think I'm looking I'm digging I think 
I'm going to go with a hackle. And I think to keep it... I'm going to find a grizzly maybe. A white, white hackle or a grizzly hackle. Or maybe this bright blue. If it fits, it ships, boys. I tell you that for free. It might be a little bit big. Here, a little bit webby. All right. We're going to try it. Just to see if we can. And we're going to tie it in by the tip. Alright. We're going to untie it. Rewind. I just want something underneath. I want a little... It needs a little... It needs a little collar action. Alright. Get those out of the way. And I just toss those off to the side. They're they're done. There's no scrap on those. I, I'm not going to be able to reuse them a second time. Not without much hassle. Look at this big old blue monster. Maybe... See, I think those are going to be just... Might be too much. We're gonna give it a try. We're gonna tie it in by the tip. Uh, it's just gonna be too long of a hackle. Let's find something just a little bit more size appropriate. Because I'd rather find something that's size appropriate than just looks cool color wise. And I think it's. I think it's just going to be a basic grizzly hackle. Yeah, we'll go with that. We'll go with a grizzly. Because I think a grizzly comes out a little bit more lighter and whiter than, than anything else. I think that'll do it. I gotta get those scissors away. Those are huge. There we go. It's hackle time. Finally. Finally. It's hackle time. This is a little bit stiffer of a hackle, but we'll make it work. Alright, one, two, we're going to go one more turn. At this point, we're right behind that bead head. And all this hackle is going... But, with any luck... We'll be able to push it down and back. Give it a couple of wraps. All right. That'll work. Give us a nice clean landing pad up front. Biots down again. One, two of the blues. Kind of a bluish green. I don't know. We'll see if the fish care. 
all this effort and they probably don't even care. I mean, I care. Beautiful. Oh, I forgot to show the little busy bee. So, way a while back, I got this uh, this guy. I just now call him the bench monkey. And way a while back, he came with a little busy bee. A little bee and a little monkey. And the, the bee's seen better days. He's been... Been out there. Well, I think that one's pretty cool. I think I'm going to go back to the standard uh, Biot colors. I'm going to keep the red thread. Go back to the brown hackle. But I'm going to use this uh, white in that mix again as far as in the body because I don't know about you but I really really like that I think that just touches the whole thing off Let's do one more at least. I think we got time for one more, yeah. And as you can tell, these are not, at least for me, these are not a get these tied quick, fast, and in a hurry uh, type of fly. I like that blue, it's a little different. But we're gonna kinda, on this next one, we're gonna basically incorporate a little bit of everything in this next one. Yeah. About those TTS reports. I like the black. Maybe we'll go with that black head too. I think so. Not sure how well the difference between the black and the gold comes across on camera, but I guess it does come all, come across fairly well. All right. 26 weeks in a row. That's 50 for two hours. That's 52 hours of uh, live streaming. Thank you all for joining me. You know, it, it's sometimes it gets a little tough um, with the with the long monologues and this and that. But you know, in the end. I know who this is for and why I'm doing it. Um, you know, it's for us veterans, and I say us because I got my start here with Project Healing Waters, and it's just been a fun adventure ever since. And everybody's adventure is going to be their own, but you know, we can have fun while we do it. All right, so size 12 hook. 2.7 millimeter bead, All right? Just like that, bazinga! And we need our wire. We're 
getting down to the last few turns there, so let's go ahead and get this bad boy started. Here we go. Good enough. I like that. And we'll start with our thread right back there. Mark our thread over that lead free wire once or twice. Get back here. We're going to kind of go back to the traditional um, color theme as far as having the uh, dark brown um, biots at the, for the tail. Time in one at a time. And again, the one at a time is how I do it. If you want to learn how to do it um, quicker, faster, and in a hurry, or um, catch a different YouTube video, I'm sure there's got to be 900 out there. Actually, I wanted to build up a bump. Here we go. Yeah, I think maybe the reason why I like tacking it down on the back end and then on front, um, it just keeps it in line with the shank of the hook a lot better. Um, I've discovered that if I just try to tie it in in the back and then just keep working my way forward, everything wants to get twisted, even with a locking wrap or two. And I would rather uh, tie the fly instead of uh, fight it the whole time, so I don't know. Line up the far side, and then you can just grab both. That'll work. All the way to that bump without going over. I like it. All right, where did our medium? And I suppose if we were tying this uh, smaller, um, you definitely want to switch to the smaller uh, French tinsel. You can go with a wire. Any old wire will work. All right, that's where it wants to be. That's where it'll be. Excellent. Okay, we're gonna try that again. I really like the way that came out with that white. So let's grab four-part peacock. One, two, 
two, three, four. And we're gonna get one part of this big old white emu. Or I keep calling it emu. Ostrich. Ostrich, not emu. It's not an emu, it's an ostrich. Four part peacock, one part ostrich. Paper up to that wire, and let's go ahead and advance that forward and give it a twist, but not too much twist, just enough twist. But we lost one. We lost one peacock curl. That's all right. It might get twisted right back into it. Just like that. It's back in the mix. It's back into the twist. See what happens when you don't panic? Because I know I'm going to go over this again with the... Uh, the ribbing. So I don't have to worry about it going anywhere. At least not anywhere fast. I know when you know that little bit of peacock curl got a little snafu there. That's alright. It won't be the end of it. I've seen worse. It's just a flesh wound. In fact, before I even do anything with it, we're just going to wrap our ribbing, and it just might capture it and take care of it for us. Almost. It almost did. So this is... Not your grandfather's prince nymph. I think that's what we're going to call this. Not your grandfather's prince nymph. Let's give that a trim. Where'd those junk scissors go? Boom. I like it. Yeah. What hackle broke? I don't know about no hackle breaking. Did you see some hackle break? I don't know. Alright. I really like that. That's what I was looking for. That's the right split. Alright. Alright, we gotta not forget or hackle this time. And we're sticking with this kind of a... I believe they call it a, a Coachman Brown.
this one. We'll give it the high and tight. It is hackle time. All right, Josh, you keep it real. Thanks for tuning in. Tell the kiddo have a great day with school tomorrow. Learn well. Secure that hackle. We'll give that a trim. I like that. And we're gonna go with the white. White little horns, little wings, whatever you want to call them. Some people, I guess, well, I don't know. Are they horns or wings? That's not the one I was working with. I think they're horns. That's what I call them. Wahed, wahed. I guess you could call this maybe a fuzzy nymph. No. A fuzzy prince. Winter jacket. I don't know. It's just the basic variation, I guess. I like it though. Call it what you want to call it. I like it either way. It's the only downside to that 8 dot thread. do this a little dab of head cement then we're gonna be there all right you know where that's gonna go nowhere that's where Add a little dab of glue, and we did our little dab of light. We'll set it and forget it. That's what I'm talking about. A little zap of light, I think. That is something different. Hmm. That's pretty good, I think. What do you think? I think that'll work pretty darn good. Let's go ahead and... Hmm. 
Bada boom, bada bing. Well, I think we're going to just leave it at that. I think virtually all the crowd has left. Um, nobody else is watching live, I don't think. Um, it says that there's two, um, but one is usually the system. And whoever's watching, I really appreciate you sticking with me all the way through to the end. Um, it's getting tougher and tougher. It's because it's getting darker um, earlier, and I guess kids are back to school, and uh, things are happening. So uh, that is uh, Prince Nymph with some uh, variations, and we're going to just leave it at that. We're going to... We're going to dip out a few minutes early tonight. Uh, thank you all for uh, sticking with us. Thank you all for watching. Stay healthy, everybody. Please stay safe. Happy tying. And yeah, sure, you betcha. Tight lines. Peace.